a report card on the Mesoamerican bioreef system, which pans for countries, shows that overall the health of the reef is not where it is supposed to be. In Belize, however, there are marked improvements, so much so that there has been increased development. It is great news for the conservation community whose reps were present at today's launch because the reef is estimated to contribute $1 billion to the economy through tourism, fisheries and more. The report card released today is demonstrating reef health data that was gathered in 2018 and it reflects that Belize has actually seen an improvement on reef health. Our score last time was 2.8 and this time it's showing 3.0 with the most impressive improvement being herbivorous fish increase. Now um, showing good as an indicator. Um, a good score with parrot fish or herbivorous fish I should say um, is a good thing because it's a reflection of legislation that was enacted in 2009 that protected parrot fish and herbivores and so these are important grazers on our reef. We want to see more of them because they eat macroalgae and a lot of macroalgae is not good because it can tend to encroach on the corals themselves and make it difficult for corals to continue growing. There's no space for a coral recruit to land on the reef and so we want a nice balance between how much macroalgae we have and fish and so because of this legislation 10 years later now we're seeing that the numbers have risen to the point the indicator is now reflecting a score of good. According to Fisheries Administrator Beverly Wade, the report card is a reflection of management systems and legislations put in place to maintain the sustainability of the reef. What we are now seeing is really the direct result of a number of management interventions that we as a country has, have been bold enough and have been pioneering to put in place and, and we had the kind of leadership and vision to put them in place. So Belize was the first country which placed um, the protection of parrot fish and grazers in place and we have implemented, um, we have expanded our marine protected areas. Cabinet has also agreed in, in principle to now look at the expansion of our replenishment zone. Belize is one of the only countries globally that have met that global target of 20% of its territorial waters in, in protection. But what we have to now do is to look at how can we now be more effective at this. But there are many factors that continue to affect the ecosystem, says Healthy Reefs Country Coordinator Nicole Craig. A lot of the organizations collecting temperature data in Belize has shown that over an extended period of a few months, we've been seeing warmer waters, much warmer than normal. And this puts a lot of stress on the corals, causes bleaching. And so even to know, in January, February, we're still seeing a lot of bleached corals, which this is supposed to be a cooler time of year. We're supposed to see some reduction in that. And so we're also seeing, because corals are more stressed out, we may be, we may be seeing more disease on the reef, because when you're stressed, you're not as resilient, you're not as strong to fight diseases. So these are some concerns. And of course, there are other stressor, stressors like um, the runoff from land, of course we have sewage, and so all these extra nutrients in the water, apart from making more macroalgae grow and much faster with this warmer water, it also causes additional stress on corals on our reef. So if we want to properly address these things, we need to look into um, how we can reduce some of the pollution that's running off from our land into the water. The Fisheries Administrator says that they now have to look at the effectiveness of the management systems and the work of partner agencies. We need to have a certain um, amount of total no-take areas to replenish the rest of the system. We currently have about 7% no-take of our territorial waters in Belize and the global ask is that you have at least 10%. And we have that commitment from Cabinet and we are hopeful that in 2020, we would see those areas legislated so that we could actually have them functionally as no take. That is extremely important to um, designate those areas. The other thing that I think is very much important is to, through partnerships and also through government's commitment, to have the necessary resources to ensure that marine protected areas are being managed effectively. Because if you just have them, um, there and if they're only being um, operating on a mediocre um, scale they don't serve the kind of um, biological safeguard functions that they're supposed to be serving. Dwayne Moody for News 5.